Is it true that Jesus was a gay activist who spoke out against the Romans? Hmm. Gay activist who was nailed to the cross to die for the sins of straight people. Interesting thought. Christ's crucifixion, El Greco. Don't forget his use of elongated characters and flowing lines. Next stop, Hieronymus Bosch. Dutch, Middle Ages, is from his last judgment. Bosch again. A detail of hell from his garden of earthly delights. Bosch believed that there were severe eternal penalties for a life of sin on earth. He also believed that humans were flawed, and he used his paintings as a way of moralizing and preaching his Christian beliefs. Remember, hell is nothing more than a scare tactic used by organized religion to keep its feeble-minded flock codependent and separated from their money. Man created God, and then powerful opportunists created hell to ensure that they'd remain in luxury and in power. The birth of Christian dogma. Remember Bosch's severe, harsh symbolism. We've already learned more than 20 different types of symbols and their meanings, and you need to know every one of them for your test on Monday. Oh, or suffer the same mythological fate as Bosch's sinners. There's the bell. See you on Monday.
No, I told him about some other Natalie who had you mixed up with her. What were you thinking? I told you not to say anything. I'm not even allowed to date. How old are you? Why aren't you going to Nelson's tonight? Maybe because I've been grounded by the mother from hell. And the only thing I'm even allowed to do right now is go to church on Sundays. Can I please have my note? Excuse me, Natalie. You do know that Ray is going to be there tonight, right? Ray is going? Of course he is. I knew this weekend was going to be bad, but this sucks. <sighs> what am I supposed to do? Go by myself? Even though I do hear that Ray and Steve are probably going to be driving up together. So if you can get St. Natalie back here to go, how could your mom possibly say no? Steve would not be going to Nelson's. That's not what I heard. So are you going to go or not? What? Hey, Natalie. What time does that gym thing start? Seven. Why? Uh, I don't know. It all depends on how bad you really want to meet Steven. I'm not allowed to go to parties. Are those tarot cards? Maybe you should read this. You read my note? Just read it. I cannot believe you read my note. You wouldn't do anything wrong, right? Right? Those parties aren't anything like you think they are. Do you really think Steven would be going if they were? And besides that, we're only going to be there about 30 minutes. I promise. Trust me, Natalie. Trust you? I must be insane. Look, I gotta go. My bus is gonna be here. I'll call you later, okay? Did I miss something here? You and I are going to that gym thing tonight. Oh, please. Oh, going in and going to aren't exactly the same thing. But they sound the same. Get it? You know, at least it's a church activity. We ought to be glad she That's wants to go. That's not the point. We grounded her for a reason. I never talked to my mother that way. And her attitude's terrible. Hi, you've reached the Larsons. Please leave a message. God bless you. Hi, Jean. This is Margie. Um, is Mary going to that church gym thing tonight? Well, the reason why I was asking was because Joe and I are going to go out to dinner and we'll probably be home late. So I was wondering if you could please take Natalie home after they're done tonight. Um, Natalie told me that her and Mary were looking forward to hanging out together anyway. Let me know if that's okay. And if not, no big deal. I'll find somebody else. Call me. Thanks. Bye. Now, because Natalie's going, I'm supposed to say it's all right. I refuse to be the bad guy. Someday discipline's gonna mean discipline in this house. Don't forget, I have a meeting at Carol's at seven. You never told me that. It's on the church calendar. You never told me that. I have a building committee meeting with the pastor tonight. Who's gonna watch Elisa? Jean! Jean! Great. I want to make something really clear to you. The only reason you are going tonight, and I mean the only reason, is because it's a church activity. You are home before, and I mean before, 11 o'clock. Oh, 11? Dad, that's their clock. I'm thankful you are even getting out of this house tonight. Finish the dishes.
I made you a present for your birthday, Mary. The birthday's not until next week, silly. This is so nice. You made it out of acorns. You put it well. How does it look? Mommy's calling. You better go. Mommy and Daddy won't be gone long. That what you said last time. I don't want to go down to a babysitter. I know, honey. I know you don't want a babysitter. We have one upstairs. I'm late. You got your coloring books? I gotta go. If she's not home on time, Babysit instead. Bye, Dad.
you're not wearing that to the party, are you? What are you doing here already? You just missed my dad, and you already smell like beer. You're acting strange. Are you okay? Just come on in and wait until I'm ready. <sighs> Nelson's party already started. This is such a waste of time. I knew she wouldn't do this. She's coming. I told her to look for us. Well, then where is she? It doesn't matter. We're waiting. She was my only way out tonight, Sarah. I can say I went to the gym, go to the party for a while, get back here before this thing ends, and my conscience stays clear. I can't believe you call that a conscience. <sighs> well, how's yours? Unlike you, I don't pretend to have one. <sighs> Anyways, what's up with you and Rick? That's none of your business. You got dumped, didn't you? Just drop it, Sarah. What if he's there tonight? Is that gonna bother you? I'm going there to meet Ray, remember? Whatever. There's Natalie. I told you she'd come. I must be out of my mind. Look, you'll be back before this is over. Now, do you want to meet Steve or not? And besides, technically, you were here tonight, right? I guess so. If you're going, get in the car. And for God's sake, Natalie, don't embarrass me tonight. Everyone's gonna be here. Ladies, yes, very nice. Ooh, fine. <laughs> In about 30 minutes, you'll be about as drunk as I am. <laughs> Let the party begin. Step right up. <laughs> yes, very nice. Ooh, especially you, my dear. I'll see you downstairs. <laughs> Ray is? I'm telling you, Ray's not here. 
tonight. You went to that church gym thing. Hey, you want a beer? Catch your aroma, sister, then I'll break your neck! You least expect it. I'm gonna crush your face! busy when the cell went off. Anyways, I was thinking, couldn't you guys just find a ride from someone? What? You're the one that got me into this mess. And you are so full of it. You're just mad because I'm the one that's with Rick oh, and you please. are not. You know, I should have never listened to either of you in the first place. I went against my better judgment over a stupid guy who isn't even here. Sarah, you're gonna get me out of here now. Got it? How's it going, Mary? Me and Rick are going to go up to the lake. If you need a ride that bad, I'm sure we could take you to the church. On Why our can't way I there. just take your mom's car? You're not taking my mom's car. Sarah Rick is drunk. And you know what? This is a ride. You can take it or you can leave it, Mary. <laughs> we'll take it. Did you find her yet? Not yet, but God help her when I do. I'm telling you, you can't put a door there. Can we please stay on the subject? We're not talking about where the door goes, Chuck. We're trying to talk about the color that's going to go in the bathroom tonight. Guys, if we don't stay on this, we're not going to get through this tonight. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Oh, be careful. I will pick up Alicia on 
the way home, and I will meet you there. Yes. Goodbye.
gotta get out of here. Can you hear me? Natalie! Are you guys okay? see Mary. Well, here's what we're going to do. Daddy's going to set you down, and I'm going to let you sleep right here for a minute, and you're going to get to see Mary in the morning. You wake up tomorrow, she'll be right here, okay? God, to help us. Hit Feb on the monitor! Mary, can you hear me? Check her pulse. Nothing. Charging at 200. Clear. Go, go. Go again. Charging at 300. Clear. We got her. She's back. Oh my God. You're not gonna die. Yes, let me We're die. not gonna let that happen. Watch that monitor. Don't let me die. Don't let me die. Don't let me die. Don't let me die. Don't let me die.
back now. Let's start another IV.
It's taken me several days to figure out exactly what to say as a conclusion to this tape. What I've just described to you is real. I know where I went that night. They said I died, but that was only my body. I know now that death can't be measured by heartbeats or blood pressure gauges or brave wave monitors. I went through life thinking that bad things only happen to other people, but there are no guarantees about the next day or even the next hour. And here I am because of one careless night, pushing the limits, thinking I was invincible. Death was never a thought. Jesus was even farther from my mind. I guess I figured I would have plenty of time to work it out with God, but I was so wrong. I know I'm responsible for Natalie's death, and I'll never be able to change that night. But I only pray that what I have learned can help it not to happen to any of you. And that's why you've received this tape, to tell you that Jesus loves you and that tomorrow may be too late. I believed a lie that said I could form God in my own image, a God without absolutes made in the likeness of my moral failure, a God, a God easily influenced by my appetites, a God so human I could barely tell him apart from myself. But I was wrong. There is a death that lasts forever in a place completely separated from God's kindness and love. But Jesus died once, so I don't have to die twice. The long journey from Halloween to Christmas was only possible because of God's mercy. Hell is real, and eternity is long so much longer than you could imagine. And God help those, those who have grown up in the church but never became part of the body of Christ.